Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. My name is Ryan Narayan and I'm here to talk with uh, one of our senior security researchers, Mr. Kurt Baumgartner, about exploit kits and specifically about exploit built into these kits, the entire marketplace, how they work, what are some of the, uh, the main components we're seeing there. So welcome to the webcast, Kurt. Thank Let you, me start by asking about the prevalence of these exploit kits. Are there, uh, first of all, let's just back up a second. What is an exploit kit? Well, uh, an exploit pack or exploit kit is really um, a cyber criminals toolkit. Mm -hmm. They're usually web-based and they're off-the-shelf software for attacking an end user's uh, system. Right, so this is more like a, like a B2B tool sold uh, from one cyber criminal to another cyber criminal. Enables one enables cyber criminals to launch uh, web-based, mostly web-based attacks. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, the the idea is uh, you fit you fit actual exploits for known or perhaps unknown vulnerabilities, mostly known vulnerabilities, into these kits, and these kits are then uh, modified. Uh, beefed up and used uh, you know, in SQL injection attacks. Uh, most of the drive-by download stuff we see is related to exploit kits. Talk a little bit about um, uh, some of the kits you've been tracking and some of the exploits that have been built into those. What are, you know, what are in, in your mind, some of the more commonly exploited uh, uh, desktop applications uh, as, as they're built into these kits? Well, the two most common exploit packs that I've been seeing over the past couple of years has been the Eleanor exploit pack and the Phoenix exploit pack. Uh, they're hitting probably millions of users with mm -hmm. exploits. Um, they drive traffic to any specific site where mm -hmm. the exploit pack is you know, waiting with mm -hmm. its set of exploits. Um, when we examine uh, the management consoles in the wild, uh, we find that usually Acrobat Reader is the top most uh, targeted and mm -hmm. effectively... Number one by a far way. By far. Mm -hmm. um, Why? Is there a specific reason for it? There are probably a, a variety of reasons. Uh, number one, they're very reliable. Number two, uh, there are over 500 million uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader installs worldwide. Right. Uh, that's a nice big target. Right. Um, people, we're, we're finding a lot of people do not update their Adobe Reader or Adobe Flash. Mm -hmm. um, although the sort of these malcrafted PDF files um, are by far the most prevalent. Okay. And in addition to Adobe, um, any other any other specific apps that you see prevalent in these kits? Yeah, the the exploit packs will carry anywhere usually from six to twelve exploits. Uh, they target by far the 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 first client side application is Adobe Acrobat Reader. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll also see Internet Explorer. Mm -hmm. um, this past summer, there was a, a Java mm -hmm. uh, exploit that uh, that received a lot of um, activity mm -hmm. in the wild, and and then you might see Firefox, and right. the list goes down from there. The, the number one target, obviously, or well, we can say the only target for these is the Windows platform. As of right now, as yes. of right now, we've heard a lot of noise from Microsoft and a lot of uh, a lot of you know really forward-thinking, uh, positive improvements in the Windows uh, platform, specifically DEP, beta execution prevention, ASLR, and some of the anti-exploit roadblocks or mitigations, if you want to call it that. Uh, we've been told that these things. Uh, reduce the effectiveness of exploits. Are you seeing that? Are you seeing it becoming more and more difficult for these exploit kits to work on newer versions of Windows? Or are you starting to see advances in techniques built into these exploit kits to get around these, uh, these d mitigations? Well, g give me a sense of what you're seeing. How are cyber criminals responding and adapting to the changes in the operating system side to build a defense? You know what I'm asking? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, well, there are a lot of moving parts to mm -hmm. talk about here, but um, to answer probably the most interesting, or to provide the most interesting answer to, to the question, how is the marketplace shifting because right. of defensive technologies that have been effectively built into the Windows platform, um, the answer is uh, the cyber criminals uh, developers are becoming much more effective at evading the defensive right. technologies. So, for example, uh, data execution prevention has been built into hardware. 
The Windows operating system takes advantage of that. And uh, in, around mid to late summer, we have been seeing sort of an explosion in uh, return-oriented programming techniques that specifically target and are effective against uh, the Windows 7 platform. Right. So they, it's a reactionary marketplace. Uh, the cyber criminals, they are, right. they are very aware of how this stuff is being implemented on Windows right. and Wintel side. But you're actually seeing uh, 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 aggressive attempts to get around, uh, to bypass Windows mitigations, to bypass they're built, built into these, these specific Eleanor Phoenix Ab exploit kits. Absolutely. Uh, the Phoenix exploit pack in particular. In the wild, uh, I've been seeing simply two exploits delivered. So the cyber criminal will, um, will purchase and set up a, a, a Phoenix exploit server. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll remove all the other stuff because it's just not worth it anymore. Uh, the MDAC, the, the stuff targeting IE5, mm -hmm. even though in a lot of kits it's still, pre it's still available mm -hmm. in the wild and being used, um, I might see only two exploits on a server. Right. And the first one, and pretty much the only one being delivered to end users, is, say, uh, one that is targeting and effective against Windows 7 on down. And bypassing depth. It, it bypasses depth. Uh, just to wrap up quickly, you, and you mentioned uh, uh, MDAC, which is uh, not a discussion altogether. We, we, we're running out of time uh, to get into that discussion, but the, the reason these exploit kits are so effective and popular is the fact that end users, uh, for, for all kinds of different reasons, whether it's piracy using pirated versions of Windows, uh, whether it's just user education issues, are using old vulnerable versions of desktop applications, are using old vulnerable versions of Windows, and are not patching. Is that, would you say, is that, that that's the, the outdated machines and outdated desktop applications is the main reason uh, exploit kits and exploit packs are so effective? Is there another, uh, another reason? I think exploit packs are so popular because they're effective. Um, and they are effective against older versions of software, and there are lots of users using older versions of software. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, the, the packs are targeting the newest, most effective defenses, mm -hmm. including the data execution right, right. prevention. So we still are seeing IE6, the older versions of the software being targeted. Um, and that seems to be a steady source of income for the cyber criminals. But they're, they're ready for the newer mm -hmm. stuff. Thank you very much, Kurt. Excellent insight. Uh, gave us a really nice overview of exploit packs and some of the stuff we're seeing on the web-based right. side. And thank you very much for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a Kaspersky Lab uh, webcast. Ch look for us on YouTube and on securelist.com. Thank you.